Welcome, uh, everyone. This is Chris Roney speaking. Um, welcome to the webinar. I'm going to be speaking today about FAME bond programs and how hopefully you or your clients could help uh, save uh, interest expenses on eligible project financing. So <clears throat> I'll get started in just a second, but just some housekeeping matters. This is the third in our business webinar series. We did have uh, earlier seminars or webinars on our uh, insurance products, pro rata versus leverage, which was presented by Roxanne Broden, and also the FAME direct loan, which was presented by Charlie Emmons. Those are available on our, our website at famemain.com. This webinar will be recorded, and uh, we'll post the PDF um, of the slide deck and the recording on our website after the webinar concludes. We will also send a link to that to anyone who's been registered, whether or not you were able to listen in today. So uh, I'm going to get started, and I just let you know from a question standpoint, I'm going to take questions. Um, you can send in your questions anytime you want. Um, if I'm able to answer it along the way, I will. Otherwise, I'll answer them at the end for sure. Um, so I'm happy to take any of your questions, and uh, um, I'll just go ahead and get started. Sorry about that. Um, so you have to bear with me. This is my first webinar, and uh, I'm sure um, I'm sure I'm going to be less than uh, less than stellar. But uh, this is me, probably from my high school graduation picture. <laughs> um, but uh, um, again, I've, I've been here at Fame um, in various capacities as counsel um, for 23 years. A couple of FAME generic slides just to give you a sense of where uh, what FAME does and where this pro the programs we're talking about today, where they fit into our suite of programs. Um, so this is what we call our risk continuum. And so it's, it ranks all our programs um, in accordance with the, the risk profile of the borrower. So you'll see the higher risk um, on the left and the, and the lower risk is on the right. Sometimes, uh, but not always, those, uh, those risks coincide with the business stage of the of the business borrower and so you know conceptual stage up to a mature business you'll see at the very you know more conceptual stage and higher risk we have our seed capital tax credit program which I also administer um, and that's where um, investors can uh, passive investors could get tax credits of up to 50 percent uh, for investments in eligible main businesses um, working our way up the risk continuum to things that are beyond concept stage, hopefully into operational mode. We have our FAME direct loan, which is a multi-purpose direct loan, and um, we use that for any any different um, business and any any different type of um, uh, project they may have. Um, we then get into some other programs that we administer for other agencies, and then our most basically our bread and butter product, which is our commercial loan insurance, where we insure bank loans uh, against losses, um, where they uh, not, the, that particular borrower is not fully uh, bankable on its own. And then finally, uh, hopefully in the, in the more mature and in the lower risk category, we have the programs we're talking about today, which is the Revenue Obligation Securities Program and the Municipal Securities Approval Program. <clears throat> FAMES, uh, this just this past year, um, just again, from a FAME generic standpoint, we, we, we've assisted with the issuance of about $66 million worth of debt, um, affecting about 250 businesses in every Maine county. You can see here a, a disbursement of our various loans that we've made or helped, helped to facilitate, um, and we've helped create or retain nearly 3,400 jobs just in this past fiscal year. Since 1983, when FAME was originally uh, created, we've helped deploy over $2 billion in loans and equity capital and created uh, nearly 100,000 jobs across all of Maine's major industries. So that's all for our self-promotion our self slides. Um, so moving on to the, to the topic of the day, which is the bond programs that FAME runs. Um, since about five years ago, January of 2014, we've issued about $440 million worth of tax-exempt private activity bonds. When I say private activity bonds, I, I did notice from the from the attendee list that we have 
a wide range of, 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 of attendees in terms of um, what their experience level is in this suite, anywhere from bond council I've worked with before to bankers I've worked with before and, and everywhere in between. <clears throat> Private activity bonds, as, as, um, as the name kind of connotes, um, is bonds issued for private activities, and that, that's distinguished from more governmental type purpose bonds, which would be, uh, you know, a, a town of the town of a city of Augusta issuing bonds for a road or a, or a public building. These are bonds that the government allows to be issued for private businesses, and that's uh, that's important because <clears throat> um, governmental issued bonds um, have the benefit of being tax exempt under federal law, um, and so. If uh, federal, uh, if we're able to issue as a as a government organization, FAME is able to issue bonds for private businesses. Those bonds can be treated as tax exempt, and therefore we can uh, pass those uh, savings onto the borrower, and they're they're uh, able to get a lower interest rate. We'll talk about that in in a little while, but uh, just to dif differentiate between the, the 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 different kinds of bonds that are issued by uh, government entities. These are private activity bonds that, that the federal tax code allows us to uh, issue and uh, um, allows us to treat as tax exempt. There are limits on those. Um, so again, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but the, um, so, you know, there is no limit on government organizations issuing bonds for, for their own governmental purposes, but private activity bonds are limited. The IRS doesn't want us issuing countless bonds uh, that don't get taxed. So um, every state has a, a what's called bond cap uh, allocated to that state based on a per capita calculation. Uh, Maine's is um, somewhere in the $300 million range, and that's divided amongst several other um, state entities that could issue bonds for, for private activity purposes, and that would include the Maine Housing Authority, um, includes the state treasurer, includes the Maine Health and Higher Education Facility um, uh, Agency. So um, we, we are working together with other agencies to issue these private activity bonds. As, as the slide states, uh, since 2014, we've issued nearly $440 million of these types of bonds, including um, $165 million worth of, of financing for a large not-for-profit health information network, another $108 million uh, we've issued in financing for not-for-profit secondary, secondary and private higher education capital projects. So those are usually your private schools, your Kent's Hill uh, or other types of schools, um, and, and also for um, private colleges. So it could be Thomas College, things like that. We've also issued $42 million worth of financing for other healthcare facilities. Those could be um, you know, either hospitals or, or nursing homes or other types of healthcare facilities, sometimes office, healthcare office buildings. And another 75 million in financing for qualified solid waste projects. And those are not just your typical landfills and things like that, but also recycling entities and anaerobic digester projects, um, things like that. So it's a, a pretty diverse, um, pretty diverse uh, group of financings, um, but all you know, but ultimately limited by federal tax law. So you can see that they're not you know all types of businesses. So on the list for today of, uh, is is two two programs, the Revenue Obligation Securities Program and its corollary, basically the Municipal Securities Approval Program. Uh, the distinguishing factor is who is, the, who is the issuer. And under the Revenue Obligation Securities Program, FAME is the issuer of the bond. This program provides manufacturers, solid waste facilities, and 501c3 organizations to access that tax exempt bond financing that I mentioned. It's ideal when it's done on a, what we call a conduit basis, meaning that the borrower has already has its own credit arranged. So that would be either its, either its current banking relationship or a new banking relationship, or uh, if it's going, or has, is strong enough to have its own rating to go out into the public markets. Um, so FAME does offer loan insurance that I, I mentioned in, in the FAME generic slides. Um, we are able to add insurance, but these are typically for very high, you know, very high um, credit worthy borrowers. So not our traditional fame client. Um, and we can offer insurance up to, this says five and a quarter million, but we're in the process of uh, raising that to seven and a half million and that'll be effective uh, fairly shortly here. As it says, fame is the issuer. Um, and that's that's relevant for, a lot, for many reasons. Uh, one is just the way that the transaction gets papered but it's also eligible uh, or not eligible for bank qualified treatment, which 
Uh, it's really getting too much in the weeds for this uh, somewhat high level webinar, uh, but that's an additional tax benefit um, that um, that bondholders can can um, have by virtue of these bonds that can ultimately further reduce the cost of borrowing. Um, but it's not it's not applicable to Fame because we're we're lumped in with the entire state of Maine as the issuer, and uh, the limits uh, don't allow us to to take advantage of that particular aspect of this of the of the federal tax code. The municipal securities approval program is, is again, on what I said, a corollary of the revenue obligation securities program. And the, the really, the only real difference is who the issuer is. In this case, it's the municipality in which the business is located. And so that, you know, that may be the city of Auburn um, or, or any city or municipality. And uh, those uh, those entities are the issuer. That does not mean that FAME is not involved because we have a role, which I'll show as, as I go through the procedural slides in a couple of um, slides later from, from now, FAME is still involved in the process, but at, when it comes time to documenting the, the bond transaction, the, the particular municipality is the issuer in this case, and that has a slight difference in terms of the fees involved um, for FAME, and um, it also allows, because that particular, particular municipality may not uh, may not uh, issue significant numbers of bonds in any given year, they may be eligible for bank qualified treatment. Again, that's kind of a subject for a, for a higher level bond, uh, bond webinar, but that's just gives you an idea of the differences between the two. The features of our bond programs in terms of what, you know, what borrowers would, would likely be candidates for this. You're looking for a project that's usually more than $2 million. There is no, you know, tax floor, uh, but just the transaction costs generally dictate that you, that's probably not cost effective to do it much below $2 million. Um, there are transaction upper limits uh, for certain kinds of borrowers, again, dictated by the federal tax code. So for manufacturers, uh, that's limited to $10 million uh, per, you know, for that particular project. Um, and because uh, these are traditionally small manufacturers, so it's not only a ten thousand, a ten million dollar transaction limit, but there are also limits on how much, uh, how, how many, how much capex those particular manufacturing borrowers have in a in a six year window, including the the, the project. So again, these are these are traditionally smaller manufacturers because that six year capex limit is twenty million dollars, and so if it's a ten million dollar project, there could only be uh, another $10 million worth of CapEx, either in the three years prior or the three years following the transaction for it to, for it to still qualify. There is no limit uh, from on a transaction size to 501c3 bonds or for the solid waste facility bonds. Um, there are other, are other pigeonholes that, that are eligible types of projects, but these are the ones that we encounter most of the time, so I'm, I'm using those as examples. The best way to figure out if your project's eligible is either call me. I am not by any means a tax lawyer, but I I, uh, I can I know I know some tax lawyers um, who will who will generally give uh, at least a cursory view on whether or not the project might be eligible. In which case, uh, further you know further diligence can be recommended for uh, determining whether your project might be eligible. But these are the general categories we're talking about. Fame statutory limit um, in terms of length of the term of the bond can be 30 years. Um, that's generally sufficient, uh, although some some transactions are uh, trying to spread out over 35 years, and we're not we haven't been able to accommodate the longer terms on those. The rates, everybody everybody usually the first question they ask is what, what are the rates that are offered under the program, and and that's a that's a great and relevant question, um, but that that's not determined by fame. Those are usually set by the credit provider. So. If you're working with your bank for this transaction, it's going to be whatever you negotiate with the bank. Um, if it's a public, publicly uh, issued transaction, it would be whatever the market, you know, whatever your underwriter is able to secure for you on the on the on the open market. Um, so um, we do we do hope we do hope that since it's tax exempt, it would be a significant re uh, reduction from the taxable rates that you would otherwise or your clients would otherwise pay recognizing that the, the borrowers are not paying income tax, I'm sorry, yeah, are not paying income tax, the, I should not say the borrowers, the, the, um, the bondholders are not paying income tax uh, on, the, on the interest income that they receive from the borrower. So they're able to accept or willing to accept a lower rate of return 
because they're not paying tax on that return. So um, you know, I, I tell people it's you know it's a range, but you know I usually by rule of thumb I usually say 30% savings. Um, so depending on the size of the transaction and the length of the term, that could be a very very substantial savings. But it is obviously dependent on on your particular situation. There are additional costs for doing these types of transactions because they're complex and, and involve tax law and, um, and and they require more parties to the transaction. So um, we have uh, just from a fame involvement standpoint, we have a application fee, which is $5,000. And then we charge a one-time issuance fee, depending on whether or not this is a transaction that requires some of that al allocated bond cap. So it's 0.2% if you don't, which would be like a 501c3 or 0.3% if you do need that, that allocated bond cap, but that's a one-time fee. It's not an ongoing or annual fee, which some agencies in other states charge. Um, so, you know, FAME's involved in that we wouldn't ordinarily be involved in your transaction, so that adds some, some level of fees. Um, you do have your usual players, which is the bank, the borrower, um, and, and their particular uh, lawyers, um, but then you also have a, another lawyer involved, which is your bond counsel, um, who's typically uh, either is or associated with a, a tax lawyer who can give the tax opinion that ultimately determines that this transaction is eligible under the federal tax law for tax exempt treatment. And so we, in, we do allow the combination of bond counsel with either the bank's counsel or the borrower's counsel, um, so long as the parties all agree. Um, so in an effort to try to uh, reduce some of the uh, attorney's fees of, of the transaction, but there are, you know, but it is involved additional work. So it's, it's, it's um, still additional cost to, for the transaction. So um, again, that, that kind of dictates the, the effective minimum size of the transaction, just because you are paying additional counsel fees um, as part of the transaction. And those have to be spread, you know, spread out over the terminal loan and so you're measuring that against the potential savings from the tax exempt treatment to determine whether it's a you know whether it's a worthwhile economic transaction for you or your borrower fame generally this is not a, a federal tax law limitation but a fame limitation we traditionally limit the sales of our bonds to qualified institutional buyers which is a sec term um if we do or or an equivalent so we're, we're generally and, and this is again a little bit in the weeds but um, we generally want our bonds to, to be held by very, very sophisticated bondholders. And so those are you know, typically banks, any, any bank would be, would qualify and, uh, you know, insurance companies, other, you know, other, uh, other, uh, well, you know, well, or, uh, well healed and, and well, um, educated, um, investment, um, houses would, would definitely qualify. But our point is that we don't want bonds sold at the retail level to, you know, to, to, moms and pops and, and widows and orphans and things like that. So as I mentioned, the, the whole idea or, or benefit to doing one of these deals rather than a, your traditional commercial loan would be to hopefully substantially reduce the interest cost for eligible borrowers. There are two ways to do these, as I alluded to earlier, you can do your direct placement, which is typically a negotiated transaction with, with, your, with your lender um, and that has some that has a, a lot of benefits. Um, the other way of, of doing it is issuing bonds in, in, in what most people, what mo most laymen would would consider kind of the more the more um, regular way they hear about bonds, which is on the bond market. Um, and so that would involve um, an underwriter or uh, somebody who's going to market the bonds um, on the public markets for you. That requires the trustee to represent the group of bondholders that might buy the bonds. Um, each of those parties has their own lawyer, so that adds additional costs just to just to even to the more expensive cost of doing this transaction. Um, but it is uh, you know competitive, you know competitive interest rate um, type uh, environment where you know you you will get the best possible uh, tax you know tax advantaged rate. On the other hand, um, they are fairly rigid in the in the sense that you're you're dealing with a trustee and not your not with your local lender, and you're therefore anytime you need consent for any uh, any uh, change in the in the loan terms or bond terms, then you're having to uh, deal with a with a, with a, either a trustee or a group of bondholders who may or may not um, be that willing to go along with what you're what you're asking. 
Um, so uh, one of the one of the reasons uh, that um, most people are doing uh, what I call direct placements um, these days are for that for that flexibility and and um, and, and it's a benefit to the lenders as well because they're able to retain their clients um, and treat this essentially as a commercial loan with some additional interest savings for the borrower and the borrower gets the flexibility of knowing the people it's working with and being able to work with one bondholder and to get any changes, whether that be a covenant change or something like that without, you know, in a, in a much more um, rational setting for them. And it you know, provides the, the lenders an ability to, you know, to maintain, you know, their client deposit relationship and other things, and, as well as their loan relationship and the interest income um, that they gain from most of their lending relationships. So we, you know, the, we've talked a lot about bonds, and 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 I guess you know, perhaps I could have started with the idea of what you know what is a bond. Um, and this this diagram tries to to explain without being too confusing how a bond works. For those of you who aren't familiar with with these types of transactions, so in, in a traditional loan context, if you're just talking about a, a loan, I would say. Um, if you could focus on the, the relationship between the, the fame bond and the borrower, you would see that the borrower signs a note and, and the proceeds of the loan go to the borrower. And so that, you know, fame in the context of this, this part of the example would be the lender and the borrower would be the borrower, of course, and that's your traditional uh, commercial loan uh, transaction. In a, in, a, in a bond transaction, you're really, it's, it's really what I call it a two-step loan. Um, and, and so, Big picture wise, FAME is issuing a bond or, or essentially a promissory note to, um, to someone, in this case it's a bank, um, and then the bank loans the money to FAME and then FAME turns around and relends it to the borrower. So that's why I say it's a two-step process where FAME issues an IOU to the bank, uh, the bank gives FAME the money, the FAME turns around and loans the proceeds of that transaction to the borrower for its project. The borrower signs a promissory note as it would in any commercial loan transaction, and all of the, the, the loan documents are then assigned by FAME to the bank as security for FAME's obligation to pay the bond, and the documents make clear that the borrower, rather than paying FAME, would just make payments directly to the bank, and FAME basically disappears from the transaction on an ongoing basis, just so that it, it then kind of becomes a very, uh, very uh, customary transaction uh, go on a go-forward basis between the bank and its and its borrower. The FAME process is a mixture of uh, state, you know, state law and federal law. Um, so, you know, it, this is a little uh, off-putting to, to look at it from this context, but I, I would focus mostly on the middle here, which is the which is the FAME process of, of just how do we get through a bond transaction, what's, in, what's involved from a step-by-step -step basis. And, um, and you'll see that, that both the municipally issued and the FAME issued all follow the same process. Some of the color coding of the arrows is what is kind of dictates who is doing what, but all the same steps have to get done. Over to the right is what, what happens if you're asking for FAME insurance on the same transaction. It's more, uh, more of a parallel process where you're you know, like any other, um, for those of you who are lenders in Maine, you recognize this process um, on, on how FAME approves loan insurance. And it's, it's just a corollary process that then um, is applied to the, to the standalone bond process that's described in the middle. So procedurally what happens, first you have to fill out a bond application and pay the $5,000 application fee there's a inducement agreement that's part of that uh, application document that starts the clock running for your eligible uh, project expenses. Um, we then are required to uh, have a public hearing. So we provide notice of that public hearing uh, in, the, in the local newspaper where the project's located and also in the state newspaper, Kennebec Journal. We also provide direct, uh, direct notice to any of, uh, any of the borrowers in-state competitors. And, um, so that they get all, all that gets in the paper or direct notice to those people um, of the upcoming public hearing. We also require a DEP to issue a written assessment, um, which is basically just a rundown of what permits you either already have or will need for the project. And then we also uh, need a letter of, of support from the, the municipality in which the project's located. Um, not necessarily fully supporting the project, but stating uh, that it won't 
create an undue burden on, on public infrastructure. Um, so usually that's provided by the uh, code enforcement officer, might be the town clerk, it sort of depends. After we have all that information, we, we schedule the public hearing. The public hearing is usually here at FAME. Um, it also serves the purpose of what's called a TEFRA hearing, which is a, a federal tax law requirement. And so we combine our state law required public hearing with our TEFRA required public hearing. Um, we hold that hearing here at FAME. And uh, it's an opportunity on the federal tax side, it's just an opportunity for people to comment on the, uh, on the transaction for or against or, or neither. Um, from a state law perspective, there are certain there are certain requirements that FAME has to find in order to approve the transaction going forward. Those aren't particularly onerous. Um, those those include a finding of public benefit. So it might be additional jobs, it might be additional tax, uh, you know, property tax revenue, um, or, or some environmental benefit. Um, so we have to find public benefit, and we have to find a, um, a, 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 the absence of undue harm to in competition uh, from in-state competitors. And so um, this is generally not a problem. If nobody objects, that's, that, that's um, deemed, to have, deemed to have been found. Um, but we have had several transactions where we've had to actually issue a decision after carefully analyzing the competitive impacts on a project. Um, we have not yet found that the, a project would cause undue, undue competitive detriment. It's usually a uh, process of looking at what the what the supply chain looks like, what the sales you know, what the sales uh, targets look like, um, and most most of the people who uh, are against the project have issues not with those two uh, those two areas, but rather either they, they just don't want any competition at all, um, or they're um, you know or they just not you know sometimes it's just neighbors not in favor of the project, but we end up overruling those. So. Um, We've gone through the public hearing now. We issue a certificate of approval, um, assuming we can make those foundational findings I've described. Uh, once we've done that, we then publish another notice, which is called a notice of intent to issue. That again goes in the state newspaper and in the local newspaper of the project, saying we've made the required findings. We intend to issue bonds to, to help finance it. It creates a 30-day window under state law for objections to be filed in the, uh, in the court and appeal. Um, and assuming there is no appeal, then the transaction can go forward and is deemed to be without, you know, without, uh, without the ability to be undone legally. Uh, so during that during that 30-day window is when, uh, assuming we haven't done a lot of the work already, is a bond council and, and fame and, and and the borrower and the bank are all working together to get the documentation uh, that's necessary for the transaction in final form and to actually close on the typically on the on the 31st or second day um, and as part of that as part of that closing we would if it's a if it's a deal that requires the the allocated bond cap we would issue that whether it's either it's a we issue it to ourselves essentially if we're the issuer or we would issue it to the municipality if they're the issuer and again you would see the from the if you see the blue arrow the the blue arrow to the left here is where um, a municipal deal kind of skips over the FAME process um, to the allocation so that although the documentation is done at the municipality level, if it's a municipal issue, municipally issued security rather than a FAME issued security. But again, same, same general steps. So that's a that's a rough overview of, of the programs. I know it's been kind of high level, and um, there's some who, who have probably heard nothing new than, than what they already knew. But hopefully, it was a beneficial uh, or a benefit to, to most of you. And um, one of the things that um, um, I get a lot of questions on this program. So I mean, my my uh, my contact information is on the some of the earlier slides, which will be posted and. Uh, I get a lot of calls, and you're, help, you're welcome to call me anytime to talk through a project or talk through the process to, to kind of uh, get, get a better sense of what's involved. Um, I, am, I am always available uh, and, and uh, happy, to, happy to speak with anybody. So I'm um, happy to take any questions. Um, and like I said, if, if, if there are no questions now, I can certainly, uh, you know, people can email me with questions after the fact and I, I'm, or, or call me, and I'd be happy to answer those anytime. So I'll just wait a minute, another minute or two to see if I, I know I can't, I, I know I couldn't have been that thorough to uh, to leave no questions. I probably created more than I answered, but 
Um, again, uh, this isn't your one time to, to get your question answered. You're happy to reach out separately. But I'm going to wait a few minutes before closing down to see if any questions come in. So I, I do have a question. Um, uh, somebody asked about whether I had recent examples of transactions with manufacturers. Um, and so going strictly by memory here, uh, the, the one, of the, one of the last ones I recall was we did a transaction for a company called Sigco, which is a glass panel manufacturer in Westbrook. Um, we also recently did um, a transaction for uh, Schlotterbeck and Foss, which is a, I think a, uh, some a high, uh, food, a specialty food manufacturer uh, was in Portland. I think they moved out to Westbrook. Um, we've done, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, cause these are small manufacturers. Those are the two that come immediately to mind. Any other questions out there? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up then. And um, again, anybody who has any questions, just uh, look at this, look at the, my contact information and and uh, reach out. Be happy to chat with you. And uh, hopefully this was helpful. And I look forward to uh, working with you, working with you in the future. Um, this is our commercial team, and uh, you can reach out to any of them on any uh, on any fame business matter, including uh, bond transactions or potential bond transactions. So um, again, thank you. Um, Feel free to reach out whenever you uh, have a moment. Thanks.